we start? We, we already started. <laughs> well, in the not too distant future, we still play Star Fox. <laughs> Greetings, Space Cadets. I am Hal. And I'm Dave. And together, we are on a trip to Jupiter. Incidentally, it takes a very long time to get to Jupiter. Last time I checked, it's about two years, but if there's more time between then, well, then, uh, fuck us. It's very complicated. It has to do with the relationship of the sun and the stars and... Oh my god, it's coming straight at us! Well, uh, I blame you. So to fill the time, we are going to be playing video games. All the video All games. All the video games. And we decided to start off with our space trip with another space game. A.K.A. Star Fox, A.K.A. My First Furry advent Adventure. <laughs> so it begins. So, so, so right here we actually have control options. Now, now I'm more familiar with uh, Star Fox 64 because I'm a dork like that who... Should, should we train? <laughs> do you, do you, have, how much have you played this game? I know game? I haven't played this game. <laughs> Uh, well, you're 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 the runner of this, so uh, you choose. Hal is in the pilot seat today. Now I control the ship. Oh, one day I'll wrestle it back from you, you malicious AI. So uh, this, this is different. Like I got really used to Star Fox 64. That was actually the first one that I played. But and that one lets you choose your own path. But they had paths that were like easy, normal, and hard. Whereas this one, it's just straight up choose a path from the beginning and you're stuck on it. Yep. And so we're going to choose path one, which is the easy slash normal route. Here we have planet Corneria. Corneria. Fourth planet of the Lilat system. Um, AK Star Fox team, our last resort is to counterattack Venom. Good luck. Uh, we're going to die, probably. If I, if I, I know, we're just going to die. We're just going to commit suicide here. We're just dead. <laughs> They forgot to train us. What are the controls? <laughs> well, uh, we're about to find out here, aren't we? Um, but yeah, like I said, I had more experience with the 64 version. And look at these oh, man. graphics that haven't aged Those today. Are not a lot of polygons. So this is the best 3D the SNES could muster. And this is after it was like hardware accelerated by the Super FX chip. Yep. I, I will admit, like, uh, the... The picture frames at the bottom yeah. look really good. They're the best looking part of this game. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, so the, the the ground plane I don't think is even, like, three-dimensionally drawn or something. It's just, like, they, they have some sprite layers down there in the background. Oh, oh my god. Now, this uh, game begins a trend of having to follow Slippy to get power-ups. Uh, Although why we're doing stunt flying with the worst pilot in the team <laughs> is beyond yeah. me. Well, you know, it's like a, it's like Top Gun. You know, your friend dies, and you're convinced to take vengeance. So Slippy uh, has to die for us to take vengeance. Um, right. Slippy dies and gets replaced by Crystal. Uh, that didn't happen in Star Fox Assault. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I I am unfamiliar with Star Fox Assault. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's uh, that's for another day. <laughs> that is for our darkest day. But uh, this one, so what, what always bugged me because I came from '64 where they have uh, a an analog stick, b a reticle. <laughs> the, I forgive them for not having an analog stick because that's a whole different controller. But the reticle, yeah, that could help. So I kind of do that shoot 'em up game thing where you just fire constantly. Well, it's very much like a shmup from a back, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's an arcade. Uh, it's a little bit like Space Harrier or something. Yeah. I, I love that the only texture they could put on those buildings is that little Corneria emblem. Oh, yeah. Everything's like untextured, shaded polygons. Well, it, it makes me feel like I'm looking at Reboot from the 90s. <laughs> like, you know, all those... And much like Reboot, it's a classic. It, it is a classic. Uh, and let us not talk about some of the later attempts to bring it back. No. There is no reboot reboot. Uh, yeah, there is. You can't is. reboot reboot it already rebooted. Uh, yeah. That's what reboot was. <laughs> yes, uh, you are right. We aren't talking about possibly a Power Rangers ripoff. Uh, we got help, Slippy. Okay. Uh, I, you can't hurt your teammates in this game, and I forget if it's they even lose, like, an appreciable amount of health if you don't help them. I... Like I said, I am very much unfamiliar with this. 
Yeah. So I, I'm just kind of they, they will complain. Let's uh, let's shoot at Sylvia over here. Come here. Yeah. That's uh, fuck you. Yeah. Sylvia. Hey, it's me. Oh God. Hey, it's me, Slippy. You're showing me your love by shooting me. <laughs> Why must I hurt everything I love? Well, you know, you're Star Fox. You just gotta hurt everything you love, including. I mean, yeah, I am a predator. I'm the only predator on this team. Or no, I guess Falco would be a predator. Uh, Falco is a yeah, predator. he's a bird of prey. Yeah, you know. Uh, you know, I'm a mammal, so I'm, I'm the best. So this is the attack carrier. It's in most Star Foxes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, I, I, I legacy like of very poor weapon design. Uh, I, I, I think it looks like it was designed by Xeon. <laughs> the lost mobile armor the attack lost, carrier. The lost mobile armor, yeah. and for people who might not know, uh, watch Gundam. So All those uh, those plasma bolts actually can be barrel rolled, even though they're like the strongest type of enemy attack. Mm. Got him. So this guy is typically the the easy first boss. He appears in Star Fox 64, notably. Uh, the Star Fox Zero version gets a special shout out because it's one of the last bosses in the game, and is armed with like giant laser cannons. <laughs> oh, oh, I get it. Like he he's kind of like the vile. Uh, you know, he tests your mind. Yeah, well, it's like every Nintendo series has recurring like this and that's, you know, only ninety five percent. I'm slipping. <laughs> oh man, you you suck. Ninety five percent. I am not prepared to well, pilot this mission. Well, you know, you gotta be like one of those kids from like ninety shows who get like a B plus and then agonize <laughs> over it for like five hours. And they then, could have done better. Why did two plus two equals five? And then you're like, and then your father has a heart attack, and you realize that it's you have to try harder to get his love. Oh my god, <laughs> I, I think I might be writing this wrong, but I assume this that suddenly happens. got really weird and real. Anyways, oh. asteroid. Well, this is a very special episode. This is a very special <laughs> asteroid belt. Andros's forces intend to build a base in this area. Destroy their rock crusher. The rock Crusher. Rock, rock Crusher uh, This is interesting because they actually, they take you into a first person view and in some ways this is way better because hey, we have a reticle. That's fair. Uh, it's also very dizzying in some ways. Um, it feels like I'm kind of tripping if I'm being honest. Oh, uh, I know. The, uh, well, it's, it's a better first person view than is in 64 yeah. because if you look here, the, uh, the HUD kind of rotates based on my position. Whereas the whole freaking ship, like, just spirals out of control in that in Star Fox 64. Oh, so I'll God. take this. And, and I really like this because I have a much better sense of where I'm aiming. Fair. Uh, but yeah, on a six. Got him. Nah, like hey, it. Einstein. Mind your own business. Uh, do we I, want... I, I just want to know, like, how animals know about Einstein, though. Um, you see, in this case, like, it was a dog version of Einstein. They had, or... Oh, man. Einstein Elephantus. He never forgets. So, you want me to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog Deep Lord? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm gonna talk about this for a no, second. No, man. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, okay. Only a second, then it's back to Star Fox Deep Lord. In the comics, uh, they had a story to explain where humans disappeared from. Oh, and apparently, right. like, it was Cthulhu aliens... Because they were trying to like reconcile the the Sega Dreamcast games. Oh and yeah, that stuff and the uh, and the uh, stupid convoluted continuity they created in the comics. Oh my so God, it explodes into so many things. So clearly, there's deep lore for Star Fox where Einstein existed, and somehow yeah. animals took over. I mean, someone had to make up the Nova Bomb systems. Yeah, it's true. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Maybe thing. Slippy just invented them. <laughs> <laughs> If I it, it, like learning from Star Fox Zero, like maybe he just invented everything. Maybe Slippy is like the super genius, and he's the cause for everything in the games. See, I kind of like I, I don't like that people just hate on Slippy left and right because I'm like, yeah, he's he's not a good pilot. So I I screw that. Also, asteroid with a face. <laughs> yeah, boy. It's horrifying. Man, nightmares await you in outer space. So that's where the meteorite came from. From uh, the, well, that's where the moon came yeah, from. from uh, Majora's, Majora's Mask. Mask. Yeah, uh, it's got like all the little like space asteroids just coalesced into one big one out there for Zelda. Yeah, like it, it only took several years from when this game released to when Majora's Mask came out. I I don't want to. Oh God, this reminds me of my friend's stupid fan fiction. 
No boy. I'm not gonna talk this about is a Super Smash Brothers fan fiction. No, so this... to speak. Is it everybody? Uh, Every Nintendo I... franchise combined. No, he just combined. He just focused on combining Zelda and Star Fox, which were his favorites. Uh, okay. So it's not that interesting. But he also put in Macross. <laughs> I. I, I, I'm not going to uh, talk about it since I don't want to bore people with stupid fan fiction. Because yeah, fan, all fan fiction is stupid, even if you're not. <laughs> even if you're a be the best writer ever. If you're the best writer. Your fan fiction still sucks. Oh, I took that in the face. Your fan fiction and still suck. Unless you're like the 10% solution. Alright, so this is the Rock Crusher. And the, uh, the Rock Crusher also appears in Star Fox 64. But this version, it's designed a little differently. Probably serves the same yeah. purpose out here in space. And how nice of Andros to install glowing weak points on it. Well, you know, it's, uh, Andros is helpful. He, you know, he's like Thanos in the comics. Always has ways to defeat himself. Or maybe, uh... uh ooh, yeah, maybe God. it actually, uh, served a purpose as actually, like, destroying... Like, it was a mining vehicle before it was a weapon. It so you gotta watch out when you destroy the last one, because then... It detaches the front section and goes flying at you. He's just like, no. Got him. And he's dead. Congratulations, you killed a mining vehicle. Uh, you know, you know, you remember Spider-Man: Homecoming? You just create the vulture. <laughs> that man, they had to rely on that for money from these meteorites somehow. And for resources? <laughs> the coronary economy is collapsing now that their rock crusher is gone. Yes. You, you you see, one of our guys just got nailed by an asteroid. Oh, uh, what the heck. Alright, who... <laughs> You'd think the collision would just stop after... So, who do you like, want to bet it was? Like, I, I, I want to think it's uh, Falco, just because that would be hilarious. On, on the left, possibly Falco. <laughs> Falco was hit by a meteorite. He, he no, it's Falco always your white, right wing, then it was Slippy. <laughs> ah, fair. Yeah. Space Armada. Ooh. Uh, I so, I like to think that this area is the first one that uh, led to all the future Space Armada levels, like Area 6 in Star Fox 64. Mm. The Space Armada consists of powerful battleships. <laughs> destroy their energy cores. Fair. Now... Uh, we gotta destroy their energy cores. And also put more people out of homes. Uh, oh my god, that reminds me. So, if you watch really carefully when you destroy certain enemy ships, uh, -huh. uh little lizard men come flying out of them at you. Are we like, just... Like, those are the pilots. And supposedly in the lore, they were the original inhabitants of Planet Venom before Andros got there. Are we just... So Andros enslaved the space lizards, or maybe they want to fight for him, I don't know. Are we just genociding lizard people? Uh, Corneria is made up of dogs, which are mammals, so they're probably, you know, a little racist. Are we, are we, are we racist against cold bloods? <laughs> you vile cold bloods. You vile... Woof, woof. <laughs> is that the dark <laughs> secret of Star Fox? Uh, you know, Star Fox Zero actually hints at, like, some dark secrets that it never pays off on. Because when you actually fight Andros in that game, there's some dialogue that suggests some, like, crazy stuff behind the scenes. And good lord, they really need to expand on that. Uh, well, you know, unless they... Unless, like... So unless, I have plasma lasers. Unless the God King Miyamoto sees a new gimmick he can get, I don't think we're going to get another Star Fox game anytime oh, man. soon. Now, I, I respect Miyamoto for his contributions, but I do think he's kind of holding them back in some ways. Uh-oh. Well... Uh, okay. On the one I hand... Know. I agree with his philosophy of doing new things. No, in innovation's great, but like, you know, I don't get why we had to wait for Star Fox Zero to have that uh, motion control gimmick when they keep churning out new Super Mario Brothers titles. It's true. Especially because uh -huh. Especially because Star Fox is a well known franchise. Like at least you know the B tier Nintendo series. Big in the nineties, Fox Fox Fox. Yep. Uh, it's one of the more bigger ones. <laughs> Like, I'm not, like, you know, I think Nintendo has, like, a comic book tiering system. You have, like, your A tier, which are your Mario and Zelda. Your B tier, which is, I'm like... I'm the leader of the Avengers! Yeah, well, you you know, <laughs> Samus is Iron Man. She's, like, the B, B leader type character. You know, she's B-less. Mario's Captain America? Yes. 
Uh, that I yes. say Samus. Uh, well, he uh, like I would say Samus is Black Widow just because they both wear uh, skin tight well, outfits. Well, also the well, I just compare her to Iron Man just mostly because she does the have color power scheme. armor though and the color scheme. Like, come on! Oh my God, you're right. Why did I never think of that? <laughs> because I'm smarter than you. Uh, because you're way more comic book oriented than me. I we, we call Dave Wikipedia for a reason. I I, I, I you may be the uh, horrible AI partner I've been sad with, but I am the Wikipedia. <laughs> that's because the connection here in space is not so good. Uh, yeah, I know. But no, like uh, it, like Nintendo definitely has its list of, and you know you have your D list like uh, Kid Icarus. Yeah. Who I I <laughs> who only gets a game when Sakurai can like beg someone. <laughs> I'm not trying to be, and you know I I know Kid Icarus has his fans, but he he's D list. Look, I love D list characters. So he's Hawkeye. Yeah. Oh uh, no 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 no. Uh, he's Quicksilver. Uh, uh, oh, so he gets like half a movie and dies. Yes. Yes. Actually, Hawkeye actually had a couple comic book series. Quicksilver had one for tell, nine Tell issues. that to the guy who beat me in a Super Smash Brothers brawl tournament with Pit. I came in third place because of him. I was playing Link. Well, you know, I, I gotta say, it's... Look, look, look. Like I'm saying, I'm not basing this off of how good they are in Smash <laughs> Brothers. You know, like... Sure. Keep in mind, in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, we had Mero, Got it. and nobody cares about Mero. Oh my god, not that game. So we're approaching, this is, this is neat, like, you see the ship you're approaching in the distance. And if I can keep it together long enough to get to said ship, we can destroy it with a fairly cheap trick, because this is a weird boss, for this game at least. Mm. Although there's so much happening on screen, and I can't tell my shots from the enemy shots. You just are... I'm just shooting and rolling. Uh, you're you're in you're in what I like to call the Macross zone, aka when there's so many missiles you don't know who's is who. Macross missile massacre. M. Yeah, and, and this is why you need all the Robotech you can get. <laughs> oh, uh, here we go. Oh boy. We're in. And yeah, like, this is actually a moment they they repeat in Star Fox Zero, with obviously much shinier graphics. Oh yeah, but uh, this is. Like, I think for the time, you know, this was really something. Look, oof, don't want to lose my wings. Look, every bad, every series of bad graphics was good at some point. Well, I think some series age better than others because it's like, are you relying on the technology or are you relying on, like, your art direction? And unfortunately, there's not much one can do with the uh, art direction of this game. Well, so. as much as people uh, rag on the art direction, I actually do really like uh, the Wind Waker's art direction a lot. No, no, Wind Waker. Wind Waker is the game that people didn't care about at the time, and then they love nowadays. <laughs> oh, it's definitely a grown. Some, but you know, that's also an example. Wind Waker HD is beautiful. That's also an example. It's more beautiful than Twilight Princess HD. Yeah. So, well, so here we go. This this boss here. We get our little like Death Star run in here. Yeah. Gotta go to the core of the Death Star. <laughs> well, uh, you, well, you, or ha have you shot your Womp Rats today? <laughs> All of them? I used to bullseye those in my T-16 back home. <laughs> okay, so normally with this boss, you're supposed to shoot the things on the side of the arena. Yeah. But the cheesy way is to just fire Nova Bombs at it. <laughs> because that's way easier to hit. You know what? You're and the wrong. splash damage just takes them out, and I think I have exactly the right amount to do this with. Well, you have at least... Uh, uh, it takes four, yeah. Two. That's now... Yep, so, uh, bye-bye, Space Corps. And then you only needed about three of them. Nah, I think I used four. Well, you have one left. Yeah, yeah, but I had, like, five. Uh, I can't miss count it. Jun, jun, jun. Jun, jun, jun. And then it all blows up. It blows up. And Han Solo goes, yee-hoo! And Darth Vader's like, I'm blasting no. off again! <laughs> Darth Vader's blasting off again. Really, that's what it looked like to me as a kid. Uh, so true. Well, I think we're gonna end this part here. Tune in next time to see us do something else, maybe. <laughs> that's right, Space Cadets. It's gonna be a long journey, and we hope that you will join us next time on Hal and Dave's Trip to Jupiter.
Maybe we'll play something else. Not like 